Hello everyone, it's Linda Ocko Jenner here again, co-founder of the Small Business Community Network, here with another SBCN Small Biz Perspectives. And tonight I have my partner, my buddy, my friend, Steve, um, what's your name again, Steve? <laughs> I forgot after today myself. Have you butter had a tart. bad day, no, Steve? No, we won't say butter tart. You've had a How bad day. You? I'm doing fine. I'm only joking. Steve Bentley, Northern River Financial. You got um, it. I've had a good day. So, so um, I think the sun makes me have a good day. So, did you say you've been eating too many butter tarts? I didn't say that. You may <laughs> imply it, but I won't deny it or confirm it. Um, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. And um, I've been thinking about sales and how we all sell in a different way. And um, I've been writing a lot of blog posts on the same topic. So today I wanted to cover a little bit of a conversation about um, not selling to strangers. How does that seem? You know, early in my career, one of the first things they tried to teach me was to pick up a phone and call somebody I didn't know and try and sell them something and then try and get referrals after that. And I was thought, that's probably the worst thing you can do as, as a business owner, trying to establish a relationship with a potential client. So I totally support that. So you're talking about cold calling? <laughs> yes, I am. Oh, my God. Without gosh. using the, the word itself. Yes, absolutely. So um, on, on that note of cold calling, um, we have a home phone. And the only calls we ever get on there are people saying, hello, can I clean your ducks? Or can I do this? Can I do that? So being really mean now, I just um, leave the phone on, on loudspeaker and let them whitter away while I'm having my supper or something. But um, that doesn't solve the problem that small businesses have when they try and sell to strangers. So in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is you don't know what solution I'm looking for unless you get to know me and build a relationship. And I think that's the way you work, Steve. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think we'd be foolish to think we know. And that's the problem. A lot of us infer that we think we know what a potential client or prospect wants. That's the wrong way. We need to establish a relationship with somebody. And it starts with baby steps and conversations. But then you get to know about what they are needing. And then you can know what, what and take that in and basically be able to provide back maybe some of the things you can do to be able to provide something that they actually may need. So instead of starting it out on a bad footing without even really knowing them and trying to pitch them, well, what about trying to get them home a little bit? And then you'd be surprised how quickly that, that would provide a better opportunity. Yeah, but there's a problem with that, Steve. It takes time. And a lot of mm -hmm. people haven't got the time to build relationships, Steve, so they would rather just barge in, ruin their reputation and say, hey, Steve, will you buy my tin of cat food or my, my box of cat food? I don't even know if you've got a cat. So I get very, very frustrated with the business owners who just want to sell to strangers and not take the time to build those relationships and those foundations. So how did, how did we deal with this, Steve? Because we've both been through it, haven't we? Well, I think we've all tried it all the options that are available to us, and we've decided on what works best in our professional capacity. And, you know, an interesting statistic for my, my in industry, the financial services industry, if people take that first approach and just try and sell you know, upon meeting somebody as opposed to trying to develop a relationship, the client retention is seriously yep. gone. You yep. know, so 60, 70 percent of those clients will not be your clients in the future. I'd rather build a very solid core of long-term relationships to do that, though, you need to do it over some time. Yeah. So to say you, you can't do it, well, you know what? you got to start somewhere. It's going to take a little while to get to that point, but eventually you want to get to that point. I know a real estate agent we know very well who 95% of his business is simply through introductions and referrals. So he's done that. He's built those relationships, and that's the way I like to model what I do. Well, let me guess. Ian Ingalls, yeah? Yes. Remax, yes. He's, he's a sweetheart. Steve, oh, this absolutely. is a really good example. This is the home phone in my office. I am not going to answer it because guess who it is? In fact, uh, I should have it on a loudspeaker. Telemarketer. Probably 80% chance it's somebody it's you don't know trying to It's a telemarketer, so I do apologize about that. But what time is it? It's I make it um, 6.35 on the dot. That is a really good example. I didn't make that happen. It was true. That is a telemarketer. And basically, why don't I get rid of my house phone? Because it's less expensive to keep it than to get rid of it. So that's Sure, but that's not the solution, people having to get rid of their house phones, is it? I mean, you look at that. That call was probably made when they felt that everybody was finished dinner, so now's the time to call. Yeah, but it's rude. So and I'm getting it is. It. Absolutely you know, is. You know, 
I have people phone me up and we were just talking about a realtor, a really nice realtor, friend of ours, very successful. But I have strangers phone me up and go, hey, um, are you the homeowner? And I go, yes. And then they go, well, we've sold 10 houses in your street. We'd like to sell yours. And I'm really nice for the first couple of minutes. I say, well, first of all, it would be really nice if you know who you're phoning. You, you're phoning the homeowner, but you know, I could be the maid, I could be a burglar. And then basically I say, so my name's Linda, what's your name? Well, that's not important. I'm from this realtor and I know I can sell your home. And I go, well, if you don't take the time to get to know who I am, I don't even want to talk to you, let alone let you sell my home. Why would I, Steve? Well, I think the problem is the realtor or anybody doing a similar kind of, of sales pitch, they're only interested in numbers. They're not interested in you. They just want to call through a number to a number to a number to hopefully find somebody who's interested in doing what they're doing, right? But they're How do they know bad, you want to sell your house? They're getting I mean, a bad name though, Steve. They're really, because I, oh, absolutely. I, I will go around telling everybody. I won't tell them the name of the realtor. What I do though, Steve, uh, if they hang up on me, put the phone down on me like they often do, I will phone back and speak to the manager and say, well, you're getting a bad name for your brand because I think it's important. But um, cold calling, I know a lot of people have got to do cold calling, Steve. So if, if you're going to do cold calling, you've got to speak to a stranger, at least say, hi, you know, my name's Linda. Um, I know you're the homeowner, but I'm afraid I don't know your name. In, would it be okay for us to have a chat about something? Surely that's a great way to do it. I, I'd like to talk to calling a warmer lead than just a cold call and there's so many different ways you can actually engage with people i mean what about just picking up the phone if that's the way you've got to do it and maybe just try to have a conversation with somebody as opposed to within 30 seconds trying to sell them on a service it right? drives me nuts it, Steve. it's amazing very, you introduce yourself angry. you 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 explain a little bit about what you do more often than not people are going to be friendly and then if you can get that conversation started it's amazing where it will go well networking events we attend a lot and so um People will try and sell at a networking event, and I think it's such a shame if they haven't got an established relationship. But I don't think it's the time and the place, unless, of course, it's a referral-based thing and you're referring each other, whatever. But I think taking the time, like you said, to build the relationships. Um, I also think that the loyalty isn't there, like you mentioned earlier. Um, how many law clients do you think these people have? Because they're just interested in clients, aren't they? So if they're just interested in numbers... Are they going to be following up with you, Steve, and saying, you know, I want to continue to help you. How can I do better next time? Or are they just after getting as many customers as possible and moving on? You know, what's interesting is that the more your clients get to know you, the more you're going to find referrals and introductions will come your way yeah. because they know who you are. They know what you've done for them. And if you've done a very good job for them, then if people come to them and saying, I'm having this challenge, or I'm having this issue, guess what? There's an electrician in town who we... Yeah! Well, <laughs> Nathan Parsons. Yeah. And him and his wife are really great at, at, at creating those conversations. And and I was just uh, at an event last week where he Nathan just got a, a really large job as a result of just knowing the right people and exactly. getting referred. Yeah. And so that and, and it's amazing how many people it just the other day there was an example where somebody asked for an electrician. He must have had 15 people promoting saw, him. So they're doing an excellent job that in our local amazing. community. And that's the, how you build those. But the thing is, Holly and Nathan were strangers to me until I got to know mm -hmm. them online. And then by getting to know them online, I saw they had credibility. They were friendly people. Um, they became SBCN members. Um, but it doesn't stop there. They network everywhere and they build the relationship and they take the time to get to know people. They're not trying to sell to strangers, Stephen. Um I, I wrote a blog today, and I've used this one before, where there's a guy with his overcoat, and basically he opens his overcoat, and the screwdrivers and, and tape measures. I was going to say watches, but anyway. Watch it, yeah. <laughs> and I call it this, I have to be careful, the sleazy salesperson. It's not necessarily a man. It, you know, it could be a man or a woman. But the thing is, that is the way I see it, and it makes me really frustrated. And you've just given us some stats earlier about, you know, the success of, of these kinds of people and the longevity and they don't last for long do they they're just in it basically to make a quick book well you know it depends on what they do if they're doing it and they continue to do it that way no they're going to have a very tough time and they're going to be transitioning to do probably the same thing somewhere else and experiencing the same result right yeah but i also was mentoring somebody uh, about a year ago who i would call the used car salesman of that profession right <laughs> and nobody wants to talk to the used car salesman no. but 
what he did is he realized that there was a better way. And by changing his approach, he was able to be much more successful in his business and the way he engaged with people. Yeah. So what you're saying is people can change them because a lot of people are not open to change and saying, well, I've always done it this way, so I'm going to continue to get it. But I'm trying to work out how many things I've ever bought from a stranger. I have a really good story about when we moved into this home, we needed a water softener. Uh, we didn't want to buy one immediately. And then this guy came around when we were doing the garden and he, he, he explained who he was and yes, he was a water softener guy. We never tried to push us into it and he goes, well, obviously I'm cold calling around the new homes. Would you take my card? We said, yeah. And um, he actually came to visit us at least once a month when he was tootling around talking to other people. And we got to like and trust this guy. So he started off being a stranger. He didn't try and push his sales on us, kept building the relationship. And then we're ready for this water softener and we heard he was at um, a local, uh, what would you call it, um, trade show. So we mm. went to see him and he actually got a sale out of us. We went to him because he didn't rush the process. So you can start off being a stranger and then you can build a, build a relationship. And we refer that guy now because we love what, you know, how he did it for us. You know, I, I use the analogy of, of being a gardener and planting seeds. And what that person was doing was slowly planting those seeds, right? Yeah. Some of them are going to wilt away and you never see them actually propagate. Some of them will grow and then they'll go away. But some of them will become great plants. Yeah. And that's what he's done with you is he started and he's propagated and he's cultured and, and he's got to the point where he is able to get a sale from you because you got to know him and, and you put some faith and trust in him, and that's why he got the salary. Right? I understand that, like, we're, we work hard, we, we create our own sales, but I don't think there's as much pressure on us as, say, that guy, because he has to get a certain amount of sales. But he worked out, if he does it his way and he does it slowly, he exceeds those sales. Another guy um, is a bit of a troublemaker, actually. He's called uh, Mark, <laughs> Mark Benkovic. He... Isn't selling He's a good troublemaker. But he, <laughs> he isn't selling to strangers. But if we watch him on Facebook, on social media, he's building those relationships with humor. And it's working. Yes. And yeah. basically, those people are beginning to trust him. And obviously, he's going to get sales out of it. So we, we've just shared some really great ways how you can turn um, a first meeting where we are strangers into something really wonderful if we've just got the time and effort and we want to you know, propagate to go back to your seeds, you want to propagate, you know, the relationship. I think the other thing, too, is to speak about Mark. He gives back. He's given, I can think of a couple where he gave a couple passes to a local show, right? Just for gratitude. It wasn't anything implied or anything driven behind it. He's offered to help people do things that are totally outside of what he does as a profession, just a way of being able to create and have those conversations with people and, sh and demonstrating his worth as yeah. a person. Never mind the profession, but, you know, that it comes with it, obviously. The trust. But yeah. people are, are gravitating towards him because he's got such a strength in terms of how he presents himself in social media and beyond social media. So a couple of things I, I love to share with people if they ask for my advice is basically take the time to connect to not only your target market but other people within the community because once they get to know you, they will be referring you as long as you do a great job, obviously, and they know that. The other thing is, by building a relationship with a, a prospect, somebody who may be your target market, you're building that trust and the longevity, and they will be loyal to you as long as your follow-up is good, and they will refer you as long as you've done an excellent job. It takes longer, but it's well worth it. Oh, it's, it's slow and steady, but that's what's going to win the race, right? And I think if you commit to doing things for somebody, you've got to make sure you actually do do them, because mm -hmm. that could have the complete opposite effect. Mm -hmm in terms of your reputation. So when, uh, when we finish this, uh, this wonderful video, I'm going to check so I can tell you next time if this was a cold caller on my home phone and if it was, I should always turn it off at a certain time so I know they're going to call. <laughs> well, the worst cold callers don't leave messages, so maybe you can see the number and recognize it, but more often than not, they don't leave messages. Well, luckily, we're not strangers and we work well together. It's taken a long time to build that relationship, hasn't it, Steve? And I think it's been well worth it. It's been 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> really? Time don't, flies when you're having uh, I don't fun. remember yes. that. <laughs> yeah. But the reason I love doing these small biz perspectives with you is because 
people out there may be doing it what we perceive to be the wrong way and they may not be getting any sales so you know I like to think that we're adding a little bit of um, you know a benefit to their lives by saying well we know it works because we're still in business well I think that's that's it in a nutshell right I think people need to well, I guess why we're doing it is we're trying to give people the information that we share in so many different ways and here's just a different way where people can have questions and then google for information look for information and find a wealth of product that we've done that really talks about anything surrounding small business and all the different challenges and and, and even successes that people have so i think it, yeah. it's a good to give back in that way that's why i appreciate doing it oh. well thanks for your time again steve i always love chatting with you to you talking you to death about these kinds of topics and uh, we'll be back next week with another podcast uh, video so have a lovely evening take care